Sol Claudia. And I'm Jack Miller. We are grade 12 students at Don Mills Collegiate Institute in Toronto, Ontario. We are going to start by saying the land acknowledgement. We are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas, of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. Our school has many programs that deal with climate change adaptation and infrastructure such as our Green Industries course, our Hospitality and Tourism course, and our Tech Design course. These include things such as our farm, our aquaponics system, and our outdoor kitchen. The two experts we are going to be interviewing are Mark DeLitz and Sarah O'Rourke. Mark DeLitz is a systems-based ecologist in Vancouver, British Columbia. He is the lead of the Adaptive Management Department at ESSA. He is also big on the adaptive management of aquatic ecosystems across North America. Sarah O'Rourke is a GIS technologist in New Brunswick who works at the St. John's office of CBCL Limited. She works on various projects such as floodplain mapping, wastewater and stormwater management, and infrastructure mapping. We'd like to thank you for listening to our presentation and we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Nalitz and Ms. O'Rourke. I'm Salma Kavadia and this is Jack Miller. We are a great 12 students at Don Mills Collegiate Institute in Toronto, Ontario. Uh, to start us off, we just wanted to ask a little bit about the work you do and how exactly you got there. Most of my career has evolved while I've been at ESSA from a junior ecologist into a senior ecologist role. Um, and my work in adaptation uh, stemmed from my work in, in my master's. Currently, I'm working as an adaptive management lead and where I help in the design, implementation and evaluation of large scale adaptive management programs across North America. So uh, currently working on helping reintroduce salmon into the upper Columbia River, a bunch of uh, uh, above a, a series of, of high head dams uh, in Canada and the US. And this is part of uh, reconciliation efforts around Indigenous nations who've had salmon blocked, off, blocked from their territories for the past 80 years. Um, also working on phosphorus management in the Great Lakes uh, as part of the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement, uh, Bararoa Agreement between Canada and the US and helping reduce phosphorus loads into Lake Erie. Um, also worked on adaptive management around water resources and ecosystems in California and the, and the Bay Delta there. So I was graduating high school and I was very good in the sciences. That's kind of what I liked. So I decided to do a degree in biology. So then I went on to do a second program, post-secondary program in integrated coastal and ocean management, which is where I first learned what GIS or geographic information systems was. And again, I was fascinated. So I went back to school one more time. Um, after I finished the GIS program, I was lucky enough to get a job here in St. John, New Brunswick with CPCL Limited. We have water resource engineers and climate change specialists, so all of that gets tied into most of our projects. So, uh, Mark, uh, climate change adaptation and infrastructure is kind of a mouthful. Um, can you tell us how the two are connected and, and maybe explain what infrastructure is exactly? The infrastructure, at least the work that, that, that I'm involved in, again, with more of an ecology background, increasingly that work around infrastructure is, has been expanded to think about natural in infrastructure and green infrastructure. So not just those like concrete engineered, civil engineering types of projects that people might often think about, but, but increasingly how do we use the natural environment uh, and, and we can engineer some of that natural environment um, to help address some of the impacts of climate change and, and mitigate and, and, and adapt to those things. As, as I've learned and worked more in adaptation, I've realized that adaptation, a lot of the primary impacts of climate change are stemming from impacts on the water cycle. And so uh, adaptation um, generally is a field that considers what the climate impacts are going to be on natural systems. But in, in a lot of the work that I do that involves impacts on the water cycle. But it starts with understanding what the impacts are. It moves on to then understanding what the vulnerabilities of, of human communities and natural ecosystems will be in response to those impacts. And what strategies can we take to adapt? Uh, so Sarah, I have uh, the same question to you. Uh, can, um, how does climate change uh, adaptation and infrastructure show up in your, in your work? 
Um, so most of my climate change adaptation work does come from water and projected flood levels for the most part. I work with our climate scientists and our water resource people that will do a lot of the, the background information. What are those, what are the risks? I do a lot of mapping, so visualization, um, kind of identify where those areas of impact, negative impact from the rise in water may be, so that then we can look at, well, what can we do to, to fix it or adapt our thinking for it? So in some buildings, it may be just a matter of, will we have to lift up all the electrical information? Or if this road is blocked off, well, do we just, do we rebuild the road up higher uh, so this neighborhood doesn't become isolated? Here in New Brunswick, they just released a new data set that shows the, the coastal flood lines for a few different climate change scenarios. So you can actually see those on something like Google Maps. So you can kind of see what, if we reach those flood levels, what part, which land would be underwater, which buildings might be flooded. So one of the projects I'm working on uh, as an adaptive management advisor on design and development of a large scale water diversion of the Mississippi River. Um, so this is a map and what the red areas here are showing you are projected uh, land losses or inundation of the sea along the, the Louisiana coast. And so through erosion and sea level rise, um, a lot of the coast here you can see is, will be lost uh, in the next 50 years. The lower Mississippi River is currently highly channelized. And so what that's led to is basically um, erosion of the coastline. And because the sediments and the, and the freshwater inputs aren't being deposited into that marine delta anymore. The adaptation strategy here is around diverting water from the river into the, this, this delta area to help deposit those sediments and rebuild lands to basically help protect the communities along the coast from sea level rise and, and, um, and some of the erosion processes that are happening along the coast. There's uncertainty around how exactly to operate these pieces of infrastructure. I'm helping in terms of the adaptive management part, how do you adaptively manage a piece of infrastructure, recognizing that we don't have perfect information to know how it's going to affect communities and the ecosystems. Would you say that there's a higher demand in your kind of profession than there was, say, perhaps when you were um, in school, like I am, or like Salma is today? And it has definitely grown in popularity. There's, you can get full programs now in GIS. Um, it seems to be, everyone's starting to see its value. Even here when I started, people weren't sure what GIS was or how they could use it but they're finding ways that it complements their existing workflow. Uh, certainly there's a lot, there's a lot of folks that are, that are interested in that for sure as well, because I think there's a, there's a feeling of urgency, people wanting to take action, people wanting to do something and not just sit, sit idly by um, and, and have their jobs and their careers be, be part of the solution. So to take that a little bit further and, and to, to offer my advice to, to say, so what helps a person stand out do your homework, know what you're applying for, kind of what you want to do, knowing what your passions and interests are. And then honest, honestly, when you're looking for at an employer, honest, be honest about the, the fit between your passions and interests and what they do and communicate that. It's those differentiators that set you apart in terms of how you fit in, how you align with your, the, an organization aligns with your own passions and interests. Uh, and I think that's what kind of can really make a difference for some folks. That's very inspirational. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. So I just wanted to thank you both so much for uh, being a part of this interview. It was, it was a pleasure meeting you and hearing what you had to say about climate change adaptation and infrastructure. Uh, you inspired a lot of people, I'm sure, that are going to watch this. You inspired me and Salma, I can tell you that. Um, thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.